Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including the Mysticons, which we'll be getting into today. I'm Dylan Heisen, and I'm joined by, uh, for this podcast, Delaney Stovall. It's magic hour. Oh my god, I was, I have it on the outline, I was gonna say that, jeez. Stole my, stole my next lang. And April Collins. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, and the next thing I was going to say is, it's Magic Hour on the Animated Podcast. I had to steal, I had to steal it from yeah. you. Um, and then the joke is, oh, probably actually an hour, <laughs> because I have a lot to say, so actual Magic Hour happening. Um, we'll talk about why they started randomly saying it's Magic Hour on the show with no explanation, but um, okay. that's, <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the many topics we'll be discussing here. Um, as we're talking Mysticons, uh, the Mystic Bomb. Um, that aired last week. Was that you or is that, um, did you say that on last podcast? Yeah. Okay. I thought (laughs) Juliana in the comments also said that. So yeah, shout outs to both of you guys. Yeah. Mr. Bomb as in like Steven Bomb, but this is a better name, uh, that aired last week, um, and yesterday's Sunday episode as well. So we're talking five episodes of the show, episodes two to six. Um, we can do the names quickly if we want. Uh, How to Train a Mysticon, The Coronation, The Mysticon Kid, An Eye for an Eye, and Heart of Gold. We previously podcasted on the first episode, Sisters in Arms, um, last week. You can check that out at overlyanimated.com or search for Overly Animated Podcast on iTunes or any podcasting app. Um, we, uh, yes, we, we just talked about the first episode, then we hadn't seen any of these next ones. So we're going to get into two to six here. Um, Mysticons now will be airing Sundays at noon weekly on Nickelodeon. Um, I believe. Thank it's, goodness. Yeah, not, not every day anymore. Um, although I was pretty, it was pretty hype week. Um, it, I was into it. Uh, but uh, I think also it's airing in it's premiering in Canada on YTV or something now. The show's Canadian, by the way. I don't think we mentioned that last time. Um, oh. But yeah, and uh, so if you haven't seen the show before, um, we're in again to spoilers here, but. I'd recommend checking it out. You can listen to our first podcast on the first episode. There's not really spoilers in that one. And um, yeah, again, two reasons to watch the show. I would say still hold up. It's female driven um, and it's got like an expansive, interesting mythology. So um, definitely, definitely check out Mrs. Khan's. Uh, it's on like Nick's website. Um, all the episodes with the cable provider log on. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into all of episodes two to six here. Uh, check us out overlyanimated.com for all of our podcasts and such. Uh, but let's... Let's get into this. Um, so I think previously on uh, us talking about Mysticons <laughs> is uh, we thought that like it was like a pretty good first episode that showed a lot of potential. Now we've seen five more episodes. Um, so like, where are you with the series now? Basically, what do you uh, did you enjoy watching these last five episodes? And what do you think of the show now, Delaney? Uh, I really liked it. Like I like like usually some like uh when when shows have bombs, it is such a chore because like, <laughs> it's like I very rarely can I sit and watch it. Like when it comes on, like I have things to do. Like I'm in school, and then like this time, so like, I watched it all like last night on like the Nick app. And, like, I didn't want to die. Like, it was great. I was like, yeah, let's watch the next episode. And then I was kind of mad. I had to wait until this morning to watch yesterday's episode. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like, it's a really, like, well-paced show, which I think is a real problem. And actually, a lot of the shows that we cover is, like, pacing is a little weird. And sometimes it's like, oh, that was a really good episode. And the next episode is not so good and, like, dipping and stuff. But this everything seems pretty consistent. Like, some of the episodes I like more than others. But... You know, I wasn't sitting there like, is it over yet? <laughs> Which sometimes happens. Even when I'm watching Steven Universe, if I have to get up, get caught up on like five episodes. It's like such a chore. But this was, I really liked all the episodes. I think the show is really good. Like, I think it's like, you know, it's, you know, it's very, you know, it's demographic is very obvious just from watching it. But even then, like, it holds my interest. I like the animation. It's really fun. The dialogue's fun. Um, I think there's a lot of like good stuff here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're we're gonna get into all this. Glad, n- nice. Glad you <laughs> you're missed. A, you're missed a um, marathon. I don't know if that works as well. Yeah, it went well. Um, uh, yeah, April. Uh, where are you on this show? And what do you think of these five episodes? I I really enjoyed them. I agree with Delaney that the pacing is really well. I was really I was worried, especially after like the first episode and the second episode that. I was like, how are they going to keep this up? But they've managed to do it. So it's super surprising to me because, like she said, a lot of shows just sort of like dip. And so it gets kind of like boring. But I did the same thing yesterday. Like I watched all 
of the episodes except for the sixth one. And I, I did it like I, again, I didn't want to kill myself either at the end of it. I was just like, yeah, okay, next one, let's do this. Like, let's keep going. So I like, uh, the character development. I like the characters. Um, there's not one that I like absolutely want to kill. So that's nice. Uh, <laughs> Which uh, sometimes I, that, I'm glad you said that about Piper. That was, that was very nice. Of, very nice of you not wanting to kill Piper. Okay. Oh well, I'm glad that you picked up that it was Piper that oh, I was yeah, talking definitely. about. <laughs> like I don't want to kill Piper, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, like this show just like can, it surprises me by how like well it's doing for me. So I'm really. I'm, I'm really excited, though. I'm happy that we no longer have bombs because those can be very stressful. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, not probably not too much longer until like we've got the adventure time bomb. Cut. Like, there's th- this is the only way we can get shows anymore. So, uh, th- it's bombs. <laughs> yeah, this, it's it's uh, just this show will be weekly, but basically every other show we cover will not be. Um, but yeah, uh, like we got Bojack Horseman, Netflix dumping, like every you know everything's uh, mm-hmm. everything's bombing out. Anyway, yeah. Um, so I, I was, I've been watching this daily when, when they've been airing and, um, it's been, it's been a pretty great experience. I think, I think that, uh, the show has pretty quickly rectified its, 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 uh, quickest potential problem after the first two episodes, which was that, um, these, uh, there wasn't enough focus on the characterization of the main four. Um, I think episode two, uh, was basically the premiere part two. I think it should have been aired with, with episode one. Um, there, it, it's kind of like, it kind of like functions as an intro movie to the show. Um, I think episode two, the second half is incredibly ambitious narratively and really just wowed me when I saw it. Um, and everything we did with Tasma was incredible. So I, I really love that. And, and we didn't pick up from there. We, we kind of turned into a different show, um, which was jarring at first, especially because three was probably the weakest. And, um, I, I, I think that when we got there, we, we changed into a more of a characterization heavy show. And three to six are just every, each of the four girls has their own episode, um, which I think is a good call. Um, and I think we got into, uh, more of a slower paced show, like you guys are saying, and something more focused on these characters and episode three, episode four, you know, it was, it was moderately successful. The show's still fine. Um, but it wasn't su- potentially super successful for me, like watching the end of episode two, but then we got into episodes five and six, the latest two. And I thought these were outstanding. Um, I think we really finally hit on, um, on this, uh, this excellent level of characterization. I think, um, these are the Zarya and M episodes and both of those are like outstanding characters now. Um, and I, I really am pretty, uh, shocked with how well this, uh, with like how high a level this, sh- this show is capable of characterization wise, um, in its, you know, first 10 ish episodes. So I think, I think it's been some pretty impressive stuff here early. Um, and I, I think it's going to be interesting to see where we go now that we've had, um, the like intro episodes, each of them out of the way. And, um, are we going to turn into a more plotty show? I mean, at first, uh, after the first uh, podcast, we were like, uh, okay, the plot of the show is going to be this codex and you have to get all four codex pieces, but they already have two of them. So I think that's not going to be the, the plot for very much longer. <laughs> um, so. yeah, I thought, I thought that too. I was just like, man, we've already gotten two of them. Like, we're not we're not wasting time. Yeah. Like, is this going to be like one of those shows where we only get one season and then that's it? Or <laughs> yeah, I don't know. is this even going to last the whole first season? I think that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's interesting to see where the plot goes from now. Like uh, for me, Tasma uh, at the end of episode two really wowed me. But then she kind of was. She's only been one episode since then. I don't think she's super well utilized in four. So I'm um, interested to see how she's used in the rest of the show. I'd love to see her as more of a villainous presence rather than. Uh, uh dreadbane um he's been okay but uh considering he's supposed to be like i guess the big bad or at the point you know what I mean? like currently he's supposed to be like that big bad character and it's like i just keep seeing you like all over the place like are you like what are you doing kind of situation yeah. so i think i would rather see them use like tasma as like that like constant like looming like villainous character versus like Dreadbane, who's spo- like I said, is I, um is my impression is like he's the person that we're trying to defeat, kind of thing before he resurrects. Uh, what's her face? Who I can't the remember Crawford. now. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting. Like, who's gonna be the and kind of more of the end game villain in the show? Like, I think it's probably not Dreadbane. Um, 
So is it, are we going to like actually resurrect Necrofa or are we going, are we going in a direction of Tasma? Um, like it turns out to be the big bad here. I think that these- well, we kind of dropped like in the beginning, it was looked like she was going to try and like betray Dreadbane. Like she was like, I'm going to get the codex first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now they're like very much on the same side. So I guess that's kind of confusing. Just like, what are your motivations again? Because yeah, in- I think I lost them. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I agree. In episode one, Dark Mage uh, is uh, is like, uh, it, it, she seems like a mercenary kind of, not really working with Dreadbane, but then we get to episode four and Dark Mage is Tasma and she seems like she's just working right in conjunction with Dreadbane. That being said, we've only seen two episodes of her, so um, probably we'll see more of the, the like her not working directly alongside Dreadbane element as we as we go along. Um, that, that's true. Cause she wasn't in the, the sixth episode. Yeah, so yeah, that was seemed to be Dreadbane just on his own and he has some sort of plan. Um, he's, <laughs> he's like a plan. Yeah. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's uh, he's made, he's mining this weird dwarf gold and turning it into a portal. <laughs> Is that where we ended up there? That's what yes. it looks like. Yeah. But I don't understand how that works in conjunction with him resurrecting the craft. I think she's just going to walk out the portal. <laughs> That's it. Maybe. That's it. <laughs> Well, it's like, why, like, is that why they want the codex? Like, I'm still like, why do they want that? Like, I'm still really confused. Yeah. It's, they have a lot of motivations going on. Yeah, <laughs> They're it, like, we want the codex, but we also want this dwarven gold. And we want the and, books. Like, and, what do you yeah. want? Yeah. Tasma wants it for power. That, I think episode two established this pretty well, but I don't know what's going on with Dreadbane. Yeah. Um, he just wants it so they don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, uh, I'm going to probably make a few comparisons to Lego Elves, which came up, uh, which came out on Netflix oh this weekend. But in Lego, this is kind of spoilers, but in Lego Elves, the villain in Lego Elves also is trying to make a portal. <laughs> so, um, to get someone to come <laughs> back. So I was like, is this exactly the same thing that's happening here? Uh, it looked like the same exact portal too. I was like really surprised when I saw that yeah, yesterday's episode. <laughs> that- that portal looks like every portal yeah, in any that's true. like it's portal like, movie it's the circle <laughs> or thing. TV show. Yeah, yeah, it, that's it. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, c- comparing quickly Lego Elves um, on Netflix uh, now, it's I think it's a it's a good show to compare because we just like the past two weeks we've gotten this and Lego Elves both are female oriented fantasy shows which are pretty rare um, and they both they both came out. Um, I think this show is like a lot more ambitious uh mythology wise narrative wise character wise than lego elves although lego elves is like way better put together i mean it's animated by studio mirror who's the best animation studio in the world in my opinion and um it like looks incredible it's really it's like a really solid show i think it's probably a better show um it's more polished but um i think it's more interesting just on an like a viewer engagement level to watch mysticons um, so like, I think that's what it has going for it, that there's like a lot of intriguing elements, um, to, to, to Mysticons. Although, um, certainly I think the show can be hit or miss, you know, there's some, you know, there's some Piper moments that don't super work. Um, there's uh, kind of, I think, yes. I think anything with <laughs> Doug for me has not worked. Um, which we can talk about. Um, but, but then, you know, yeah. but then again, <laughs> but then again, there's great Piper moments. There's, um, the, there's, you know, there's great action pieces. So it's, it's, you know, it's a little inconsistent, but, um. Overall, it's kind of like they're trying to figure out what they want the characters to be, kind of too, because yeah, which is they like yeah. keep they keep yeah they keep inserting them into like all these different sort of like I say roles, but I mean like characterizations, and they're like okay, which one sticks, like which one works for us, and then we'll make it work with the rest of the show, kind of thing. Yeah, which which all yeah, then that happens with any narrative, the characterization will solidify over time. Um, yeah, I think in, in, if Piper's going to be the most like controversial character, I think like, I just rewatched episode two before this, so I can remember more. And, um, there's like an, a moment, um, early on when I don't remember, actually don't even remember, uh, what Piper's doing. And then, um, at the end, uh, but then I, I, I like the, her like liking the Nova Terran's voice gag. Um, oh, yeah. it's like, it's like, there's good things they do with her and then there's more annoying things. Um, but uh, overall, I think she's been she's been pretty solid. Um, we really haven't. One thing I've noticed we've we've really cut back on the like use of uh, modern slang <laughs> since episode one. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> that seemed to be a premiere thing only. Although we we got uh, I think we have Fabtacular a few times, but that's the only one yes. that stayed. We got Adorbs at one point as well. Yeah, okay, Adorbs. Yeah, um, yeah. Piper also is like uh, you can't see right now, but I'm making a really rude Elven hand gesture. 
Um, yeah, that was pretty good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I uh, had to get the paper talk at first, but let's let's keep going through the <laughs> plan. I don't even remember what we're doing, but um, uh, okay. So we've uh, we've had episodes for each character now. Um, we've had um, you know, coronation kind of an our our Ar- 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 episode. Um, although episode two also. Uh, Arca- our, our, uh... I was like the fir- those two episodes were very like Arcania heavy like very much so and I remember like being kind of annoyed with it because I was just like oh is this show really only going to focus on her because that'll be really annoying yeah. like she can only be that stereotypical like leader of the group having her own problems kind of thing before like yeah. I start to give up on you as a character. <laughs> and and I think there's an argument that her characterization has been the weakest of the four so far. Um I don't know if I'd want to make that uh, but uh it's th- there's there's an argument she's the least engaging at the very least which I I mean part of it makes sense with what they're doing with her. Um but uh yeah she she was- Well she's just kind of the generic tragic backstory. Right. Yeah. Like oh she saw her mom and stepfather turned into stone and so she's like writing on that like and then, like, you see it even, like, in later episodes that aren't, like, like focused on her, but they're, like, still very much like, oh, like, you poor thing. And it's like, no, you're supposed to be the leader. Don't be pathetic. Like, that's the last thing you should be doing at this moment is, like, like feeding off of everyone's, like, oh, like, oh, poor girl kind of, like, thing. Like, that, I feel like that sends almost a bad message for a show that's, you know has like strong female characters or is supposed to have strong female leads. So, yeah, I, th- I mean, I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll get, we'll solidify what we're doing with her more over time. But um, for me, she's potentially the least engaging, although uh, I think we've gotten uh, several aspects of her character, which I like. And I still, I still love her. I mean, she's, she's, she's great. But um, then we get uh, Mrs. Khan Kid, which is our Piper episode, Eye for Eye, our uh, Zari episode, Heart of Gold, our M episode. So we kind of, we've, we hit on each of the episode, uh, each of the characters in, in all these episodes. So, um, uh, through, through, uh, six episodes now, um, the question is, who's, who shines for you out of these four characters? And, um, we can check in again on who your fave is. Delaney, it was Zarya after episode one. It was, is it still Zarya now? No. What? Wait, I, I know. I have a prediction. You're so okay. Sure. I, I assume it's M now. It is. Yeah. Okay. She's the yes. best. I love her. Like every time she does it, like the night voice is my favorite gag. Yeah, like yeah. that's so stupid. Mine I love too. Her. It's so good. I, like I just love. She's like, yes, I am gonna keep doing the night voice because it's fun. And like, <laughs> like I just love her. She's so fun. <laughs> yeah, that was by that was was that episode four. That was by far the most successful part of that episode, I think. Yeah, Yo, definitely. Like, she's oh, yeah. Great. She's a very quality character. Like, and then like I just absolutely loved episode six. Like, I just adore her. And like, we're, like we're gonna go. Like, when I saw the description when I was looking for the episode, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> and then like one, like I love dwarves. Like, oh, I was hype. I was like, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> then we go and see the dwarves and her mom was great and like she has like dumb little brothers and like her dad was great so, like everything was great like i just love her and, like she's fun yeah it's uh, m's definitely a shy. so m uh her characterization shined through these six episodes and now your fave wow we have a change in fave i don't know i, don't <laughs> I still like zarya but like her episode was like fine but it wasn't like my favorite okay okay uh uh, April M was your fave before. Or is that still true? That's still true for sure. Like I was waiting for like her episode, and then whenever I got it with like this the sixth episode, our heart of gold or whatever, I was like, yes, like thank you for making her even better. Like, except I did have a lot of questions because she gave up being an engineer to wrangle Griffins. I don't know about that. Yeah, we didn't really get we didn't really get into that. Yeah. <laughs> I was really confused about that because I was just like, I was like, okay, like, I understand she doesn't want to work in the mines. That's why she went to the city and, like, is now wrangling griffins. But then, like, whenever you, like, get into, like, her relationship with her dad, I was like, oh, she gave up being an engineer and she's really smart. So I still really love you for that. But I, I just need to know, like, why yeah we didn't really like, we didn't really did she just love <laughs> griffins we didn't really get to that you know yeah right like, like like what is what is the what is the point yeah there's no but even then but even then like i don't care like i'm like you know what girl you do you like you wanted to leave this small town to go to the city that's fine like 
who doesn't want that in a character? But she's also like the most level headed character of the group. Like every episode, I'm just like, oh, you're making really good points. And like, thank you for being like the love, the most level headed person of this whole show. So, yeah. Yeah, episode six really is really good. Um, it's it's hard to argue that M is not the sh- the standout character after these six episodes. I would not argue against that. Um, I, I really love episode six, but um, only my second favorite episode of the show. I love episode five more. Um, I think I'll defend Zarya here. I think Zarya really shines in episode five, which I think is the most well put together episode of the show. Um, it's just really um, consistent uh, throughout a little bit of a tropey narrative device that we use, but we treat it incredibly seriously. And uh, there's like a great twist with, oh, it's Zarya. Um, and uh, it's uh, we we get some incredible music in the fights. You know, I'm talking about the music in the show, too. But um, I just I love the characterization we get from Zarya in episode five. I think she's potentially the second most standout character of, of these five episodes, mostly just because her episode is is so good. Um, so like, to me, Zarya and M really shine through these six episodes. They're also the two, the two we've seen most recently and the show in theory will get better as we go. Um, so, so that makes sense. I think, uh, Piper's been pretty good. Um, I think she's still, I'll st- uh, she's still my favorite. I'll say that. Although, um, I, okay. <laughs> I'll, I, I, although I like less, that's less solid. I would say all, I love all of them. I don't think, I don't think, uh, Piper and, and Arcanius, uh, stand out so much anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, th- I didn't like Piper's episode that much. Like, yeah, it's not as strong as five and six for sure. No. Yeah. I like what we get from her though. in, in that episode, she's some strong characterization stuff stuff there um and piper also has some some good stuff in the other episodes piper interacting with em's brothers is great um so especially because they were afraid of her at first yeah. which i no, they don't explain either but <laughs> she's an elf i guess that's i don't know but uh <laughs> that's scary to dwarves <laughs> yeah how, how long are we getting into uh like D D class discrimination stuff is that happening yet uh. <laughs> I don't, not, not yet, but, uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Piper's been good and, um, Arcanius has had, uh, two and three and she's, she's been pretty good as well. So, um, I think the characterization has been pretty consistent, uh, throughout. And I think all of them, we've given all of them their due. Uh, Piper, I think her episode is like the least focused on her out of all of their, their episodes. So I'd like to see a little bit more from Piper. But, um, other than that, I think, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's been it's been really strong characterization wise. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I wonder I wonder if this is a consistent attitude throughout the small Mysticons fandom. <laughs> is uh, M the standout character? Is, um, is she? <laughs> I have I've seen I like all the posts that that's that's one thing about uh, <laughs> about being in a fandom this early. <laughs> I've just seen every single post on the show, so I, I I guess I know the answer to that. There's like not that oh. like you can just go through the tag on Tumblr pretty quick. Um, but uh, but yeah, hashtag Mysticons on Twitter. That's where it's at. All the Mysticons talk on Twitter. <laughs> you can you can get Do in. Do they? There. Now I'm gonna have to find. Yeah, them and, um, and join them. Yeah, and a, a bunch <laughs> of people from the crew will also like your things if you tweet if you tweet with hashtag Mysticons. That's another good thing. Perfect. It's uh, another good thing about being on a show early is uh, the crew is gonna be is like really hyped for people watching it. So um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The creator uh, is Sean Jara at Nova Terran on Twitter. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's, I love I love that move taking one of your characters and making that your choice. I I was gonna say that's really bold. Like I wonder if he'll keep it up. Yeah, cause... but that that made <laughs> yeah. If I, if I were to create a show, I'd just take all the Twitter handles for all the characters before they came immediately. Out. Yeah, so, yes, yeah. Uh, no role play accounts for you guys. I'm taking all of them. So <laughs> I did I did look though. Um, they're all, <laughs> all of, they're all available. Um, at, uh, like, at, they're all available. at, at Arcania Goodfay is available. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna take it, but then I was, I was gonna, I was gonna register all four of them. <laughs> but, um, I was, then I was like, what's the point? Also, Emerald Golden Braid was too long for a t- Twitter handle, so you can't take Naturally. that. You can't take that one. But yeah, Zarya Moonwolf's available too. So yeah, if you guys want to start your Miss John's RP, you can, <laughs> can take those. <laughs> perfect yeah. now i know what to do with my life this week yeah i think i think that's what we need to do we need to each take a character now um yeah. we'll we'll claim them for ourselves I think everyone so. else good luck yeah i, th- I think so i think so but yeah the one sean jar tweet i want to uh, highlight is um he says but so uh shout out to you two um really called this D D influence thing last podcast i was not planning on talking about D as much dungeons and dragons as much um as we did but you guys really honed in on that and sean jar tweeted uh D is what inspired me to become a writer and make mysticons um so there you go yeah really called that one 
Uh, High five. Yeah. Dev- I wonder if he'll publish his old campaigns. <laughs> I'm sure he's written. Oh, we need to. Because those could probably be fun to play. <laughs> uh, April, April's starting the petition right now. <laughs> Sean to... just, add, just at him. <laughs> yeah, just... I will. <laughs> you think I will? Pub- publish your old campaigns. Yeah. Also, we need an official Mysticons campaign, obviously. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, don't worry. I'll add him. I'll be like, uh, two things, friend. First off. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Bunch, yeah, bunch of the Mr. Grunge, uh, uh, crew out there. Also, shout out to series director Matt Ferguson, who followed us on Twitter. And, hey. and uh, yay. <laughs> yeah, uh, Piper voice actress Anna Sani liked one of our Tumblers, uh, Tumblr posts. And then, um, yeah, a bunch of other people as well. Yeah, doing, doing awesome stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, thumbs up all of the crew and stuff uh so we got the character question okay let's talk about the new characters now um that we after post episode one so i've talked a lot about tasma already um if tasma was in more than just episode two like i mean she's in episode four but she doesn't do anything she bickers with dreadbane which is pretty good um yeah no, that's I pretty enjoy that. yeah but um if she i like how she got his face like she was like yeah. you're underthinking it yeah you're underthinking it yeah <laughs> it's, it, that i think that's how we know that dreadman's not the the the, the big bad but force just because he's, he's so dumb yeah he's like a better version of ludo in my opinion <laughs> yes i agree <laughs> yeah i mean i think we're doing different things here dreadman's actually supposed to be menacing whereas ludo is just a joke but um i i mean i like dreadman more than ludo yeah <laughs> Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, Tasma really stood out to me after episode two. I just, I mean, it was just like uh, Tasma's the 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 mole and the astromancers, and then she's just so awesome fighting them. And then at the end with the statue, um, uh, Delaney, what do you think about? It was Tasma? a really good like fight sequence too. I yeah. think. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. We'll talk about the the fight sequence. There's a few of them to to highlight. Um, but yeah, Delaney, Tasma thoughts. So like. So I was like, oh, Taz is pretty cool. And then, like, pretty early on, me and my girlfriend were like, she's the dark mage. It's her. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, when she, like, straight up, her, like, like, obviously she was like, oh, I hate you. Is, his, is it Malvaron? Mal- How do you say Malvaron, his name? Malvaron, yeah. Malvaron, okay. Malvaron. I can't figure out. I'm like, is it a V or a D? Okay, so Malvaron. And, like, like she's, like, awful to him or whatever. But then she, like, straight up tries to kill him. And I'm like, not even Azula did that to Zuko. Like, Jesus. Like, they would <laughs> fight. But Azula was never like, I'm going to straight up try and murder you right now. Like, jeez. So Tazen's pretty, she's pretty dark. Like, also her outfit is, like, kind of cool, but also kind of dumb. I kind of liked it better when she just wore her, like, robe. Because now it's like, oh, you know who I am. Now I don't have to, like, wear my robe. But I'm like, you kind of look better in the robe. She um, took her hair down. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is, like, she's, like, in a Mysticon suit, basically. Like, she looks ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I really like her. Like, she's really neat. And it's, like, the dark magic. Like, she's, like, super OP. Like, it's not fair. But... I mean, like, she she cool. gets beat by like the new like they're just they just turn into Mysticons and they kind of beat her pretty pretty quickly. That's true. <laughs> she does seem to yeah. like be able to just summon shadow things. I don't know. It's yeah. It's, so that that's that's pretty good. Um, that's an interesting power. I would like to figure out where or how she learned that because there's still a lot of stuff we don't really understand how it works. So that that would be one of them. Yeah. Uh, April Tasma thoughts. Um, I really like her. So I hope she ends up being like our. I guess our the main villain because I think she would be a better villain than Dreadbane because he's still very Ludo like, but like, I really, I did like, I enjoyed her like being the trainer and I love her like just giving Malvaron a, like a terrible time. And then even like after like they revealed she was like, you know, the mole or whatever, I was like, yes, like, thank you because that's the only way you could be better is if you were the villain. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, she's not holding back, and I I like that in a villain. So yeah. I mean, Dreadbane does. I mean, it's okay with murder too, but she's gonna murder her own brother. Like <laughs> that takes it to a whole nother level. Yeah, she was about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, T- Tasma. I would say talking about who's my fave. Tasma is my true fave, but um, we need to we need to see more. <laughs> Tasma's everyone yeah. favorite. We need to see more. Like, I, that's my number one thing on my Mysticons wish list is more uh, Tasma. No, no Dreadbane there too. Just Tasma on her own. Yeah, well, in 
I want like her character episode. Like what led her to become evil? Like how did this Ooh, Tasma how did this solo come episode? Yeah. Let's do yes. it. Yes. I would be okay with that. Let's let's do that. Yeah. Um, give give me more Tasma. <laughs> yeah. I will say next week uh, not this isn't uh, not our next episode because I I want to read our description of next next week's episode. Scourge of the Seven Skies. Um the Mysticons meet Zarya's good childhood friends and Sky Pirate Kitty Boone. What? Yay! <laughs> what? It's Kitty Boo. Okay, well, so, I mean, are they? Is, are, are they going to be an actual cat? Um, I don't really understand. Anyway, I really hope so. That's I hope so too. That's what we're getting into. You next know week, what? So it'd be better if it wasn't a cat. <laughs> I don't really. I mean, then it would make less sense. Yeah, I don't really understand that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, ho- hoping to see more Tasman. Let's talk Nova Terran. Uh, he's only in episode two, but um, he's got the the cool voice. Um, that uh, he does have a cool voice. What is with the crazy eyebrows in this show? Like <laughs> he has them, and then like M's dad has it, and I'm like, do men in this show just have like the most absurd eyebrows? Like, I guess so. I guess that's how that works. They're crazy. Maybe it's, maybe it's trendy. Like, it's ridiculous. They're the eyebrows <laughs> of the future. That's how that works. It's just I can't deal with yeah. it. Um, Nova Taran's cool. I think he should be in another episode. I agree. Yeah. Also, I did. I really enjoyed like. <laughs> How they like were like made him really ominous for no reason, and then yeah, we were, no, like, they were like really trying to do the mislead with him being the evil guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, they I like that they uh like they try to make him like super I guess like evil looking, but Piper was just in love with it. Like I think those were some of the best like Piper moments yeah. was when she's like, "Oh, I like your robe. It's so spooky." <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is like that's an interesting compliment yeah. to come from her. Yeah, but the one thing we're trying to do with Piper is that she like is pretty smart underneath, but it just doesn't come across. So that that I think this is one of the things. Like she had a good read on uh, that Nova Terran was good. Um, she like knew where the codex was in her episode. So I think this is this is one of the Piper characterization things we're trying to get across. But um, yeah, I would like to see more of Nova Terran and all the Astromancers. Um, how about Doug? Who is our Cyclops? Um, who's uh, Malvaron's friend? Um, Did they say how he ended up like with the Astromancers? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> he's just a- okay because he's just like a random character, and there it's like he's. They were like, we needed a janitor. Let's get Doug. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what does he do for them? I don't, yeah, I don't know. He's he's Malvaron's <laughs> assistant. He's a Twinkly Mare fan. Um, uh, I was just yeah. I was like not shocked, but then I was shocked. He was also a really big uh, Gnomes to Men fan. Oh, yeah, Gnomes to Men fan as well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> so I like making Doug, yeah, I like the giving Doug the, like, non-traditional masculine traits like that. That being said, he's, um, other than that, I don't think he really brings anything to the table. He's my weakest element of the show so far. I can agree with that. Yeah, I'm he's not- just there. Yeah, he's re- he's really just there, like, and even, like, I guess the jokes that they kind of make with him are not that great, like... They don't make me want to laugh out loud. I'm just like, huh, okay, like, let's move on. <laughs> the gnomes to men thing was probably the funniest thing, was, like, he really wanted to go to that concert, and the whole time Malvaron's like, he just wanted a night in. He just wanted a boy's night in yeah. playing video games. Yeah. And what was it, farting and into the, portals? Into the portal. Portal. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, did not like the fart joke. Yeah, not in on that, but... um. I, I liked it in that it was just so serious. Like, he just, it was just deadpan... <laughs> like the delivery on that was really funny. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think I think Doug's not been great, but I also don't think Malvron's had much to do. Like I'm not sure. No. Yeah. No. Like he, he's, he's almost just, too nice. He's fine, but um, his biggest highlight is being indirectly referred to in uh in uh, Arcania's diary, right? Like that's the, the boy. The boy. Oh, yeah. the boy. Who? Who, yep. who? Like, oh, who's the boy? Well, there's literally one boy on the show, so I think that it's probably right. that one. <laughs> but um, we can like, only assume <laughs> he's like really helpful and nice. But I'm, but like, I'm just like, you're fine. Yeah, I'd like to give him something specific more to do. But okay, so here's the big Malvron thing that I found. Um, this is from Teletoon's website, which is one of the Canadian channels that's going to be airing the show. Um, I don't really know okay. how Canadian TV works. Why there's two channels airing this? Maybe one of them's French. Um, but uh, this is. <laughs> Oh, that would be actually a really good. So all, all of them have all these characters have the same bios because the show airs on a lot of different uh, networks. They all have the same bios, except this one for some reason has this extended Malvron bio. Um, yeah, blah 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 blah. Laid back Malvron helps Miss Guns master their powers and guides them on their quest. He's also a good friend, and in Arcania's case, maybe even more. 
Ooh, well, that's what it they're, says. They're shipping it. Because I needed that in the bio to figure that out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, the bio is pretty, pretty uh, uncontroversial, except for this one sentence. <laughs> and in Arcanius' case, maybe even more. It's definitely, we'll ta- yeah, we'll talk about ships. Uh, I want to try to name the ship. So that'll be our, that'll be the last thing we do. Okay. So we'll save it for that. Okay. okay. Um, was that, oh yeah, Kimra. Uh, she's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um what is it what is, what is she she's uh she's a troll, troll? okay she's a troll yeah. i think she's she's okay yeah. no i thought she was funny like the like i was enjoying her and then like i was just absolutely like she i was like she's pretty cool pretty neat like which is you know kind of like generic oh total like butch like troll motorcycle lesbian like villain <laughs> that's who she is like my girlfriend was like, she's gay, and I was like, okay. And, like, <laughs> but she's got then, really great makeup, you guys. Yes, that was something does. that I, I was just like, man, her eyeliner is like boss. Like, and the blue eyeliner paired with the, like the magenta lipstick. And yes, I know like, what colors what they were. Yeah, like, but she's she is working it. Like, and I I enjoy the she talks uh, she talks in the third person always. Like that's she's pretty good. Like, yeah, like. <laughs> Like, if any character was going to talk about themselves in the third person, Kim Ra. <laughs> well, I really loved in the fourth episode, like, they show up. What was it? The thir- yeah, the fourth episode. And, like, they think she's there for the codex. And, no, she just wanted that yeah. stupid twinkly <laughs> mirror. Like, I love that. Like, she just, like, it's so stupid, but it was amazing. And, like, I just loved that. That was, like, maybe my favorite part of that episode. Because it was just so absurd. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, that was her prize. Like, that's what she wanted. That's all she wanted. That's all she asked for. She was like, "Yeah, I'll help you, but I want the twinkly mare." Like, <laughs> that's also like it was. It was like really annoying. But I think the best gag, quite possibly, in the whole in like all the episodes we've had so far, is them. Keep, they keep playing that commercial. Like, oh, yeah, it was horrible, but it was really funny. Like, we saw that commercial like three times. And everyone wanted to watch the commercial, too. They were like, you know the commercial. And then they would play it. And it's like, you were just looking for an excuse to watch that commercial, weren't you? It's so yeah, good. Yeah, the highlight is when they show uh, Dreadbane, <laughs> the commercial. That's uh, the... Yeah, yes. he's like, what? Yeah. That, that, that sold it. They, they they hammered that enough times that showing Dreadbane, the commercial, is a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, camera camera's cool. Um, I hope we see potentially more of her, although I'd also, I'd rather see Tasma, so I don't know. But uh, she, she's... We can see more of both of them. Yeah. That I mean, would be all good. Of them, or an episode they where they team, team up. up. Yes. Yeah, that'd be good. They were, bo- they were both in that fourth episode. The fourth episode had all the villains for some reason, but yeah. <laughs> We were just throwing it all out there. Yeah, we were. <laughs> Seeing how it worked. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that was the first time we said it's magic hour, too, um, in the fourth one. I think so. Yeah. So let's yes. let's briefly talk about it's magic hour. So um, my questions are, um, like, what, um, how, why, uh, who, like, for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have, why is Arcane you're randomly saying it's magic hour? Where does this come from? I just, I don't get it. Like... Like, I understand. (laughs) Like, she just randomly started saying it, and it was like, who, what? Like, did they never referenced it? Like, it wasn't like, oh, this is something Mysticons do. Like, it was so weird. Like, Grin, it also came with, they weren't doing the transformation every time until we started saying it's magic hour. Which is Dylan's oh, favorite thing? Is Hold on. I can't believe we got like forty minutes in without talking about transformation sequence. But um, the, the that's like Dylan's favorite thing. Mysticon transformation. Yeah. Um. The, yeah. The Mysticon's Twitter account, even before the fourth episode, had been tweeting like it's Magic Hour, Mysticon's episodes on. I'm like, what are you talking about? What what is? It's not even an hour this, long. This isn't this, what is, this isn't a thing. And then it was a thing in the show. And I'm like, what are you talking about, show? <laughs> this is. <laughs> What is anyone talking what, about? What are we talking about? Where, where did this come from? I don't want to... I mean, it's fine, but it's, it's got a bad place. I just... I need it to have some meaning or something, like... It's magic hour, you girls. Just, yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, I just don't... Like, it's fine. Like, as cat traces go, it's pretty good. But, like... At least in Miraculous Ladybug, they just yell Miraculous Ladybug, like, all the time. No, I think this is, and I like, think it's like, better than just yelling the show's name at the end of the episode. I think this is... No, it's like, that's my thing, like, this is, this is better. But, but the thing is, like, at least Miraculous Ladybug, like, does it, and you, like, you know why, 
and it's all the time, and they made it some stupid mechanic in the show. Yeah, they <laughs> but like. Yeah, yeah, we do tie in the name of the show into the dumb catchphrase. The, I guess if the show is called Magic Hour, then that would be the same thing. But no, this is it's called. But Mishkan's is a better name. Um, but, right. but yeah, this serves no purpose. Uh, like, I'm okay with it though. Like it works. It's just like war- it, they just randomly started doing it though. It was like what? Yeah. I hope it's like an inside joke between like the writers and like the animators. I, it's and that's what they would. That's what they would call like their their meetings they'd be like oh, magic yeah. Oh, yeah, hour yeah, get, the, get the outlook out invite with a uh, magic hour yeah i told you that i would they need to do that, yeah. and then they were like haha let's just put it in the show to confuse everybody no, like I, nobody's I think, gonna notice it i think you're uh reading too much into it i think that it's it's a i ha- i have nothing else to i think it's into. a i think it's like it a ma- no, i would i guess that it's like a manufactured thing like they need a catchphrase and it's like this is like tested well market and that would be my guess but um you need have to have oh things my, for the little oh kids to yell in the commercial uh, i guess uh, yeah <laughs> Oh my god! Anyway, um, you gotta have you gotta have the kids like yeah. get their toys and be like it's magic hour. Like you have to have that. Like if you don't have that, you can't sell toys. Like that's how it works. Yeah, I get what is this? Like the eighties? <laughs> a lot of eighties. Yeah. Though. Anyway, okay. We need to talk about two things that uh, really pissed me off that they're in the show. Um, like we've been we've been gushing, but there's two elements that we added since episode one. Um, like these come into play. And I kind of we get secret identities a little bit in episode two, but really episode three, it's like what is this show? There's transformation sequences and secret <laughs> identities now um so these are really big pet peeves of mine if you listen to our miraculous ladybug coverage we complain all the time about both of these things and also no hey at least the show actually changes their appearance uh that's true yes. it does i know because i'm not a lot that. but they do also um they change their hair colors uh, I, they still look, no, they still look like the same person. That's not. Well, they still look like the same person, but they change, they technically changed their hair color. Cause I had a moment where I was just like, did Arcana get different hair? And I was like, oh, wait, she has different hair whenever she's, uh, like, dragon mage okay and then i was like oh they did that with all of them but they're like subtle differences but their hairstyle is different they wear masks yeah and like it makes sense unlike miraculous ladybug where they literally look the same no, I, they just put on a mask, a mask I think I, and yeah. cat noir has cat ears look obviously like. they look the same in miraculous ladybug they also look the same in this show though it's like slightly better but i think you're giving the show too this much not, credit this show doesn't make me like irrationally oh it makes me irrationally it. angry because Ga- because <laughs> gawain did not know that that was his sister for some reason wait stupid well, no. like that doesn't matter <laughs> yeah gawain's dumb but also uh, her hair color changes from red to magenta. No. That is a huge difference, still. <laughs> it's obviously her. <laughs> and it's oh got it's got an ombre into purple. Like that is a huge. That is totally not his sister. Who who is uh, and again? Lane I need to know. Is dumb. Okay, that is he true. is dumb. <laughs> I, so my 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 thing with the secret identities is always like, why why are we doing this other than that this is the superhero trope? Because what is this adding to the show? Um, and at least in the show, it's not super obtrusive here. Like, I, it's, it doesn't really matter that they, they have secret identities. It's came up like once. Um, so I don't care that much about this, but I don't really don't understand what it's adding to the narrative. Well, well, it'll be nice to like, I mean, we just haven't had a lot where it matters. Cause like, what's interesting about this show is that like, you know, in Power Rangers or something, like, this is basically Power Rangers, like, They'll be out doing something, and they have, like, little problems as themselves, but then they have to go be Power Rangers. This show, they're Mysticons, like, all the time, basically. So, it'll be interesting to see if we have more episodes where they're themselves, not just in their little hangout. Which, the fact that they have a little hangout is really cool. Like, I live for that nonsense. (laughs) Like, that's great. Um, A clubhouse? (laughs) Like, I love that. Like, that's what I'm about. Like, this is why I watch shows like this. Well, and how does no one, like, not notice that they're gone? Like, because you, wouldn't you think that Gawain would notice that Arcana's not in the castle anymore? Like... Well, that's what I thought was interesting was when she was, like, writing in her diary, and they were like, are you okay? And it's like, are you ever home? (laughs) Yeah. Like... (laughs) I agree, yeah. At least, at least with, like, 
like Emerald, it like it's like okay, like she legitimately does not live at home, so she could live anywhere and no one would notice. Like and Zarya and Piper missing. like are just street rats. Right. So the problem the problem so, with yeah. the secret identities is that who who are we hiding from? Um Piper and uh Zarya tragically have no one. Um M is not at home <laughs> and Arcana's parents have been turned to bone. Who who are we hiding their identities from? I don't know. That's what there's, I want to know. I don't think there's really a point. Like in episode two, it's like, okay, we need to hide it from, um, from Nova Terran because we think he might be shady. But like, it's, it, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the point, but it's not that obtrusive. On the other hand, let's talk about transformation sequences because these do take up a lot of time in the show. I, this is maybe my number one thing I complain about on the Overly Animated podcast. Um, Voltron also, I frequently complain about the transformation sequence. The literal two minutes of turning into yes, Voltron. And we've cut back on it, but that's still annoying. So in this show, we have not gotten the same exact sequence twice yet because there's different yeah. numbers of them transforming um so i think that episode f- the one time it was and then like we've done like when it's just like their faces and they're like on the train or whatever there's a lot of train porn in this show and i like it a lot <laughs> can you can you say that on this probably anyway um yeah are you sheldon or something for, is it, um so yes okay uh i love trains yeah, i think you're Sheld- i think you're sheldon there are a lot of yeah so in though. episode five we have the uh the full sequence maybe so they, they all transform and it's basically just they just play the theme song again um and then they end up on the rooftop and then it stops and then they're like actually on the rooftop um yeah so like that was the full sequence and I, it took up a long time but i actually liked it because they played the awesome theme song um, right. you know, because the theme song is like, like lit. The sh- the music in the show is like the best. The, the music is amazing in this show. Like, like my girlfriend's like, I'm not gonna watch this, and then she'll like lean over and be like, What's going on? Because then like, and she like the music will come on. She's like, Why is this so good? <laughs> yeah, we need to talk about the <laughs> table of the music for a second. But yeah, the uh, then we get. To, if, but if it's not all of them, I think this is how it works. I can't confirm. We haven't had a large enough sample size. But um, if it's if it's just <laughs> some of them, but not all of them, then we ju- we don't get the music, and we just get um like the them transforming in it's like a ladybug type uh transformation sequence mr con no yeah yeah that like, yeah. it's so like who yeah. is, the, is it so it's like the it's like the <laughs> yeah codex right yeah, like it's, this it's, very it's like the codex's voice. yeah that i hate i really don't like those i mean i like i like the animation um but um i just there's no purpose and i mean i could go on my abbreviated rants about reused animation which is why why do we need to do this it saves a small amount of money but i don't really think that's a factor i think it's more of an accessibility thing um like we're trying to make this um it's like if there's a transformation thing then kids see that and they're like oh yay we're doing that thing Uh, well i was gonna say i'm pretty sure it's more so like it's for the kids yes it, like, which is not it, a, which well, is not a good it, argument for this podcast, but yeah, it's uh. Well, no, but like when you think about it, like at, well, as I'm sitting here thinking about it while we discuss it, it's like the same reason why kids shows have to have like bumpers. It's so like kids can differentiate between like you know watching a, a commercial versus watching like yeah. a TV show, so that they know the difference between like reality and not reality. Yeah, and it makes it and so it's like easier it's... to watch if you're watching for the first time. It's like, oh, they're turning into superheroes. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, that being that being like, said, I think it... it I think it hurts the <laughs> overall quality. Like, like yes, makes it more accessible, but um, at the same time, we have this reused animation, and I hate that. And um, it's not like the biggest deal, but I'm gonna start to get annoyed it's with it not... soon. I was gonna say it's not as bad as Miraculous Ladybug no. though, because that's really yes. annoying. Miraculous Ladybug is literally the same. It's like every yeah. five minutes, exactly. Ladybug has every more of it, minutes. and it's the same, and there's like less of them, so it's the, it, yeah. So yeah, it, so I'm less annoyed with it in ter- like in when you compare it to la- like Ladybug because Ladybug is just really annoying. I definitely, like, definitely less it, annoying than Ladybug, but I'm still annoyed by it. By the way, we talked, we've like trashed Ladybug a lot on this podcast. We actually like Ladybug, but, um, we love Miraculous <laughs> Ladybug. It's a great I show. I will I will say through six episodes, the show is more ambitious narratively than Ladybug is in its entire season. 100%. I, I wrote that down that I was like, this show's progressed way more than Miraculous Ladybug has in just six episodes. Like yeah. the show, like clearly has aspirations of being a, a, uh, like a, se- a, a sequential narrative, and so <laughs> there's a plot. going deeper into the characters. <laughs> yeah, so that that's like the most encouraging thing. Like that, like Ladybug is like more well put together a little bit, but you know, it's um, it's less exciting, I'd say. But um, you know, it all. That being said, I'm I'm way more attached to Marinette than I am to any of these characters yet. Well, it's because Marinette. Well, I don't know. M M is pretty great. 
I was gonna say not yet. I mean, I like. I mean, I like them. all of them, but I'm 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 a big Marinette fan. So I. I mean, Marinette is like a precious baby. Yeah. Like you have to protect her. Yeah, it is a little different. <laughs> Please yeah. protect. Yeah. No one puts Marinette in the corner. Yeah. And, and we should we were talking about Ladybug so much because that's like the number one co- comparable for the show. So um, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's probably why like it's what I'm in my head keep comparing it to. So I feel like they're. It, they're most similar. Yeah. To I also each I also other. have two Game of Thrones references to make. We're almost an hour and I haven't, even, oh, wow. I haven't even made them yet. Okay. Um. So yeah, transformation sequences is annoying. Let's talk about the music briefly. So um, the, there's three there's like three tracks that really stood out to me. First of all, the most striking thing about the music is that we use um lyric songs with lyrics in them during the it's during great. the show, which I think is super yeah. successful actually. I was going to say it's really successful considering a lot of the other times when shows use songs with lyrics in them, it's rarely like hit or miss, but I've not ha- I like, I haven't complained. So it's really good in my eyes. It's like miraculous ladybug in like, it's all the good things from miraculous ladybug plus all the good things from Ruby. And it yeah, became there's, there's a little bit of, yeah, there's a little bit of Ruby <laughs> it in it. I think these might be original songs for the show. I'm not 100% sure. But um, yeah, those, I think. I think they are, Yeah, too. I think so. I think those those have been super successful. It brings a lot of energy to the show. Like, anything that just, that's the thing. This show, this show has so many things to, to they, it's throwing everything at you. So it, it's it's just, ne- it's at least it's not boring, you know. like the, it, Well, and it does, it does things well. Like, yeah, there's a lot, but it's, it's really well done. Like one of the things, like we, I know we were talking about this music with like the songs, but even like the like non lyrical music is really good. And it always plays into like the scene very well. I I agree. uh, The, the, the the non lyrics music. Yeah. So there's three of them I want to highlight. There's, um, and they're all action sequences. I think the action sequence music has Mm -hmm. been excellent. Um, in our last, I don't know what that is. In our, uh, in our last episode, uh, six, we had, um, the, uh, this like hard rock track when they're, they're fighting, um, which I think was great. Um, Mm -hmm. in, in episode five, we have the super tense, uh, music, um, which during, during that action sequence and before, and it really just legitimizes this narrative that they're going for. I really love that one during the climax of episode five. You yeah, know, that one was, that yeah. was probably the one that stood out to me the most. Yeah, I, I tweeted about that I right after. So yeah, that was, that super stood out to me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and the action sequence in episode two as well has a similarly, uh, tense music, uh, piece, uh, there. And I think the action, the action hasn't been like super standout, um, animation wise. I, I'm, I'm not clear whether we're reusing animation during that. We, do we do the same thing where they all jump into the air and we see them do the like like for Zarya she's like arcing at the top and she's shooting the bow I'm not sure if that's reused or not but it, either it's 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 not like uh even if it yeah. is you don't notice it well so, I noticed that I noticed that good. they do the same thing every time but it's fine um <laughs> well, but I think I think the thing that really brings those action sequences together is the music during them yes oh yeah um I yeah agree. so there's that uh so we talked about the transformation and sequence and stuff my plea for season two um if this is if this is what's being worked on right now is kill the transformation sequences please okay um so <laughs> please uh pretty please okay so let's uh you know we don't have time to go through these entire episode <laughs> outlines here <laughs> actual magic hour uh like i said and um uh so let me quickly quickly go through anything on these uh, ab- uh episode outlines that we haven't highlighted yet at the end of episode two arcania gets the her codex piece the drag unleash the dragon mm-hmm. what do we think about that unleash the dragon and it's pretty and cool. then later they're like have you unleashed the dragon yeah. and she's like i already unleashed the dragon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like dang it. well that's like the what is it like the op move yeah. they're like we're in a tough, a tough spot. We should unleash the dragon. And she's like, oops, I already did it. Ha ha. Like, <laughs> also, like, pro- like, I know, like, the coronation is probably everybody's least favorite episode, but I want to talk about how incredibly petty and amazing it was that Arcana went and crashed. <laughs> It was it was, so it, was, it, was it was very petty, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. Like I was like, this is awful, but it was hilarious. I was like, this is the pettiest. Like I love it. Like I was like, this is so petty. Like it was great. Also, I loved it. I love that cupcakes were what motivated her. I she know. Decided so to crash. Good. Like she. That's, that's like, what like tipped her over. Right. Well, and, but in my head, I was like, girl, just go get your own cupcakes. Like, why are we doing this? Yeah. Yeah, there's some hi- like like three is definitely the worst episode for me, but there's still some highlights there. So I don't I don't think it's like bad. But the world, by the way, is called Gemina. We learned that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was not clear at all from some episodes. Um, we see all of we no. saw all of them in like uh, fancy dresses. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were very They're, cute. Yeah. Yes, they matched their personalities, which I enjoyed. So apparently, Malvron <laughs> can just uh, magic on a dress on someone. 
that apparently, apparently. I'll teach you the spell later. Yeah, like, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that was uh, interesting. Was was that was episode three the diary one or was that um, later? I don't even remember. No, that's uh, well, that's when that's when that's an episode um, five. Oh, it's five. Yeah, okay, we'll yeah. get to that. That's when she gets attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Oh, the that, that other thing from episode three is that uh, Gawain is, I think, mostly annoying, but then he calls Zarya the blue one, which I loved. So that was well, cool. yeah. That I was like the blue one, and I was like the blue one, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Gawain, Gawain you've earned the... another episode after that line, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. I also enjoyed the what is it? They're talking about like upper body strength, and he's like, no, there's just nothing but jiggle. <laughs> yeah. And he's and like, he just jiggle, so jiggle. Cool. <laughs> It's pretty good, yeah. Um, episode four, we talked about the twinkly mare stuff. I don't, I don't know why uh, on the fourth episode of this show we need to do a My Little Pony parody, but I guess that's what we're doing. Um, uh, it worked. It was pretty they're funny. They're busy promoting the movie. That's why. So. I don't, is, I, are these even related production wise? I'm not even sure. Oh, we had a Goblin Paul Bart mall cop. Um, that was great. He just wanted to retire. I enjoyed him. I Barthes. know. Yeah, it, that's all I wanted for him the entire time. It's like, uh, so the, it was like, let him go there's home. There's goblins in this, yeah. Apparently, yeah, um, I'll take the goblins from uh, Lego elves over these, but um, uh, we knew we knew there were goblins because Malvaron was like the goblins who do my dry cleaning. Oh, yeah, he did say that. Also, they oh, say yeah, they say, right. "Oh my goblin!" I think um, there's a. Yeah, I thought they say, "Oh my I, goblet." I don't know. <laughs> I, I, no, it. But they started. I think like, it's this Goblin. Is the but that started there's it a few. They, they say a few different things too, like in place of um, our world stuff. There's there's a there's like a different. One. I think it's Goblin though. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. we get Fabtacular again. Piper's Codex piece um, in episode four. And she unleashes mm-hmm. the phoenix. Yeah, the phoenix. Yeah, yeah. We talk about M's knight. Is that what we're doing? We're unleashing. Yeah, things? that's what we're doing. Like yeah. unleash the dragon, yeah. unleash the phoenix, uh, unleash the wolf. Yes. <laughs> no, not yet, but with the wolf. But yeah, we talked about M's night voice, which is super standout from that episode. It's so yeah. funny. Yes, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing this night voice. Yeah, girl, you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I think Piper is uh, really great in that episode. Um, episode five, um, I have a bunch of stuff from here. This is my favorite one. Um, I, for, in general, I think episode five shows off all four characters the most well. Like, all of them have their each. Episode six also does this, too. Like, the last two episodes have done a great job mm-hmm. of keeping track of everyone and giving each of them, like, great uh, character moments. Um, like, Piper is just super affectionate with everyone in this episode. Um, the yes. standout moment yeah. is when she calls M the dwarf of my heart and then kisses her. Yes. <laughs> when she's going to bed. Yeah. That was the best. I think this is one of our ship options. Uh, table that for a second. But yeah. Uh, here's the first Game of Thrones reference. Zarya is keeping a list of, uh, of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, her name's Zarya, yeah, Zarya which yeah. has Arya. Yeah, Zarya's in just Arya like... with a Z in the front, and she is Arya's right. list. So I think, is this the inspiration for this character? I guess so. Maybe. But she's well. I, I guess she's kind of an or. Well, Arya was kind of an orphan too. So, like as the seasons went They're on, kind of similar, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, got short hair. Dark. I'm not like I'm not thrilled yeah. with Zarya randomly having a list, but it was fine, I guess. Um, well, it was really funny because it was for really dumb reasons. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they're like, oh well, like when people flip their hair too much, and it's like. That's a strange reason to decide you want to murder someone. I'm just assuming that that's what this list is. Yeah. But- By the way, episodes, um, this episode and also episodes two and three, I feel like have a lot of tension between Zarya and uh, Arcania. And this is, uh, one of, I, but we call yeah, that, this is, I, I think this is one of our most prominent shipping <laughs> options as well because they have, uh, a lot of, uh, emotions between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what. We'll see which. What. Uh, we're. We're shipping the most in a second. But yeah. Um. Zarya's list. Mathis. Uh. Zarya's like. Uh. Orphan friends. Uh, like street friends. Yeah. Bully. His face just made me want to hit him. Like. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to punch him. Yeah. Arca- Arcania's um magical diary writing. She says she's so much in common with Zarya. And um, Yay. and also there's there's a guy and a, there's a guy yes there's a yes. guy mm, I wonder which one of the the boys in the show it's Doug oh it's Doug wow, that would be a good choice I like that I like that yeah uh, let it be Doug yeah. um we have like double hugs I wrote that down in this episode I feel like that was in one of the YouTube videos and I was like I screenshot it better early but yeah um uh Zarya Zarya is the revenge beast I love that twist um we talked about the music um. And uh, Zarya says, uh, 
Zarya is like going to be a bigger person here, and Arya is going to Arcania is going to like try to integrate better, or like try to understand like the not like the lower class stuff better. So, oh, for the record, okay, the whole like Arcana being like, don't abuse your magic, like Arcana, really, girl, you have no like, room to speak. Like, you're giving the lecture right now, like really, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's yeah. Well, she well, we need a uh, our, our more arcana development coming. Yeah, this is like another good episode for her too. So I think uh, two three in this one. Well, she has she's had really good like moments with all the other characters, like you know being like a leader and just she's really nice. Like it's really yeah, good. I think so. Uh, let's talk. Uh, uh, yesterday's episode, Heart of Gold. Um, M's uh, Emerald's mom. Um, she was. She, great. I want her to be my yeah, mom. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> uh, the brothers. We talked about the brothers with. Uh, uh, with uh, Piper, and then her dad, Malachite. <laughs> oh, I totally was like, oh, Malachite had a makeover since Steven Universe. <laughs> Lord. Pretty similar characters, Steven Universe Malachite and this Malachite, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Right? Yeah. Uh, They're basically the same. <laughs> I like, yeah, her dad just, like, grunts at everything, is um, a good, tr- like, uh, traditional, like, detached dad, uh, like, presentation, Yeah. I was really confused what they were doing with that because I was like, oh, maybe that's like just how he speaks to people. And then like he actually spoke and I was like, oh, I kind of liked it better whenever he was just grunting and everyone (laughs) understood what he was talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, he's he had a great we'll talk about their scenes later. Uh, They call M. Putinkle. Incredible. Putinkle. Best nickname ever. (laughs) Yeah. So good. Um, so in this episode, I need to get your, your thoughts on this Piper freestyle rapping sequence when they all start no. dancing. Oh. Uh, Were you feeling it? Uh, no. <laughs> Why not? No. The mic oh, drop God. was funny later, but. The mic drop was funny later, but not this ra- I was, oh, no. <laughs> no. I was not okay with it. Like, I'm more okay with it than I was when it happened in, like, the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, this but... is this is a lot better than the new Powerpuff Girls rapping sequences. Yeah, I I I, I, I kind of liked it. I mean, generally, I hate the stuff, but um. But you also love Piper. Yeah, so, so that, I'm, bi- I'm biased. Yeah, but um, I think this is a good Piper character, and I like everyone dancing. So we got gifts out of that. But that, yeah, that's, that's true. It. That's okay. Fine yeah. for the. For One the thing gifts. I want to highlight in this episode six is M. Um, like they all transform except M doesn't transform because she's on her own. But then she just like like just instantly transforms she she like uh waves her hand or something and um we see and she's like done, she's done. So, well a lot of them get mad they heard, and they do it like they heard your cry so what's Dylan, the purpose of the like... long transformation sequences if <laughs> m can just snap her fingers and do it what they heard your well they've cry. shown them do that like they just like get mad or whatever and pop into it and then it. like yeah oh, God, that pissed me off <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, uh, yeah i'm, I'm not they, they, that shows that it doesn't even take them time uh it's just it's just padding okay um so i like i like the presentation of dwarves as like engineers and stuff i think that was cool um like we get uh m's mech suit and um her like her iron man knockoff suit. that was great yeah, and her with her dad and <laughs> she the, even put the thing in the chest like she did oh, right like, <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I thought all that was good. Um, I guess we had more songs with lyrics. I wrote that down from from this part. Um, like I was really confused by those things because at first I was like, "Is that something she made?" Because like she uses it to autopilot the limo, and oh, then yeah. so I guess she's like, "It's Mysticon magic." And I'm like, "But what is it?" But but it like makes sense that she. Well, now now that you mention it, like it makes sense that she's very like she knows her way around technology i guess well yeah no it's just i'm just confused like what it is like what is it i don't know yeah. magic it's, it, yeah we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we're not getting a lot of specifics here um but yeah we have all that we have um the uh solarite uh from the like the the dwarf gold or whatever i don't know and um they he gets yeah. just enough of it he uh, says dreadbane and um yep so he can open his portal. Yeah, so his little Stargate yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so we'll see about that. Yeah. Um, I think standout scenes from this episode are M has a great scene with Arcania. Um, I, uh, when she's like, I'd give anything to talk to my dad again, right? So that's a typical stuff, but that yeah. was a good scene. I thought that was like a, I thought that was a really good yeah, scene, I though. I really like that, yeah. Like, um, and, it was very, like, stereotypical, but yeah, it was good. Yeah, I definitely like that. M with her dad um, was, was another good scene, too. Um, so we... we I like her, like, trash talking on, like, uh, whatever her griffin's name is. 
Yeah. I, I didn't. Oh, Topaz. Topaz. Yeah. Topaz. Yeah. What do we think of the Griffins? They're great. I love the Griffins. They're very expressive. Best form of transportation ever. <laughs> yeah. The, what? The... Also, Chaco is amazing. Oh, you're in on Chaco. I love him. Okay, I like that. He's so cute. He's adorable, yeah. and, like, he's really helpful, and, like, he's just fun. Yeah, he's never not helpful. So. He's like Momo. Like, he's just great. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's fat Momo, definitely. and He's very fat yeah. Momo. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we got fat Momo at one point. He didn't look like Joko, but um, that's okay. Uh, and, yeah, other... April, anything from your notes we haven't talked about? Um... <laughs> No, okay. I think we've gone over a lot of everything, yeah. which I'm really surprised because I wrote a lot of notes. I'm glad we covered all, all these pages, yeah. Delaney, anything we haven't talked about? Nope. Okay. Think nope, we need to name the ships. We're not done. Okay, so. Oh, no. <laughs> but, okay, very briefly. Delaney, what uh, pairing, potential pairing out of any characters in the show, romantic pairing, stood out to you? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think Arcana and Zarya is like an obvious one. Yeah. I just think Emerald, Emerald needs a girlfriend, but I don't know who it is. Uh, April, what stood out um, to you? Which potential pairing? Um, I really enjoy the dynamic between Emerald and Piper. I wouldn't be upset. They are that. cute. You're yeah. right. They're so cute together. Like, I just want. I'm like, if you guys could just go be happy dwarf, together. Dwarf of that my would heart. Be fine with dwarf me. of my heart. Yeah. Dwarf of yeah. my heart. Yeah. She got. She got the most specific. <laughs> like, <laughs> good night. She did. So yeah. It's. I don't know what the ship yeah. Name so okay, would we'll be, talk though. about. Okay, so I think those are the those are two. So there's the original pairings of Arcana and Emerald, and then Zarya and Piper. That's level one, and then there's another level which is the Arcania Zarya, and then Emerald Piper, which we've been hitting at a little bit. Um, there's there's not a yes. ton of Emerald Piper, but there's some there. Arcania and Zarya is like super hitting you on the head with that. Um, oh yeah, they're throwing that in your face. Yeah. <laughs> we've also gotten moments between the what's the other potential pairing so we like arcania piper no but um like they've talked and um emerald uh zarya, zarya. we've got a little bit of that too so yeah but it's super i think weak, the main ones are those so. those level one level two that i talked about and then of course there's um arcania and uh malveron which is the most likely thing to be explored uh, in the show yeah um so at least you're not doing it in a super annoying we way we really haven't seen any of it yeah. other than everything um but there's, yeah, that's the only, like, thing that we've gotten out of it, though. That's it. Well, at least Malvron, Malvron isn't, like, trash. That's true. He's, yeah, he's she fine. could She could do worse. I want, you know what I want? I want an episode where Doug tries to, like, woo Arcania, because I think that would be hilarious. See, Doug, I, I think okay, Doug is Doug older. Is super gay from Malvron. Oh, yeah, that is definitely true. Oh, but yeah, that's is true. Doug, is, is Doug, is... That's, that's my girlfriend's ship. Like, my girlfriend's like, Doug loves Malvron. Like... I mean, it's fair, yeah. Is is Doug older than them, or is he just giant? Why? I think he's I just he a Cyclops. Just okay. yeah, I'm also, I'm also not just... clear on how old anyone is in the show, so it's, you know, whatever. Well, they're like, we're you know, kids, and I'm like, how old are you? Like, what are like, you? So... Old enough to leave home and go become a Griffin Ranger. I guess apparently. they're like 15 or something. Right. Like, is it possible knows? that, I've, I've, got, I've heard a little bit of talk of potentially Zarya being older than the others and maybe Piper being a little younger, so I think that's possible. That's yeah, I can see that. Like maybe a year or something, but uh, we've got no we've got yeah. no indication from the show. Um, so yeah. in terms of ship names, so I I I like. Uh, I want to hear what you wrote. Down. I like officially <laughs> naming ship names. I I I often try to call ship names on the podcast, and it often does not stick. Um, like Janor. But you know what's nice about this show? We can actually make these dreams. Yeah, because we're like some of the only, so. the only people talking about this. So um, there's been some attempts already. <laughs> Mist Gun Striker on Tumblr has just as tried to compile some ideas, but this is very this is come on. We need to work, guys. So there's three levels which you can name these okay. ships on. One is their actual names. Two is their last names. Okay. Three is their animals. Um, dragon, oh. unicorn, wolf, phoenix. Four is their class. Can we please not do the animals? Four, 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 yeah, is, four is their classes, the mage, knight, ranger, striker. The reason that you need to do no. animals. So here's the second Game of Thrones reference. So the last episode of Game of Thrones that aired was called The Dragon and the Wolf. Um, <laughs> which is, uh, which is John and Daenerys. And, and we I have a dragon and a no. wolf in the show. It's Arcana and Zarya. Oh. Oh no, they're ripping off Game of Thrones. It's, dry, Arca, Arcana <laughs> is Daenerys and Zarya is John. It's it's the dragon and the wolf. Uh, so so no. I think that they're uh, they're going to be gener- generis. They're going to be. I think you're done. <laughs> I like I like the last names one. Yeah, I I, I, I agree. I think last because their last names are so absurd. I think that that that's a good one too. Um, 
It's like Arcane and Zara, yeah. you have like Good Wolf, Moon Fay. Um I think Good <laughs> Good Good Wolf's pretty good. Um but Wolf is Wolf good is wolf, also I her like. animal though, so you have to Dragon Wolf. You can you bring the Well you know what? We'll just all all bets are off. Like, let's mix it up. Let's do Good Wolf. You can also do, and... can also do like Mage <laughs> Ranger, you know, like these are all options here. Um Mage Ranger. No, because then it sounds like you're just trying to create a new like person on in D and D. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna be a well, mage like dragon, maker. like dragon like... mage being her class, like that, like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. She's a dragonborn mage. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I feel like uh, yeah, I, th- I feel like Arcane Azari is gonna be our main thing that we need to work on naming. So I, but come on, the Game of Thrones connection okay. is too uh, is too strong here. It's too. I like. Why Good did you? Wolf. I like Good Wolf too. <sighs> I support I this one. You need, to, you need to work in. I'm going to take to Twitter. Dragon Wolf. <laughs> but that doesn't sound good, Dragon Wolf. Um, no, it doesn't. I also doesn't. just like, call, also like, like calling does. them Generous. Just like, uh, just like just calling them the Game of Thrones <laughs> name. Like, I think that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, also, I think I think Arcana and Malvron needs a name too, because that we're clearly going to do something with that. Um, clearly. Like, uh, but Malvron just has like. I, they could be Astro Mage. Oh. Astro, uh, yeah, I actually was thinking about that. Yeah, the I think Astro Mage. Mage is a good one. By the way, I think, I think That's... Tasma's last name is Grim. Um, I think that that was on one of the bios. I don't know if that also is Malvron's last name. Like, that would make sense. Um, but yeah, Malvron really just has a, a first name. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, I agree. You do like Astromancer for, uh, for Malvron. You mean Astro? Astro Mage. Yeah, no, but like, like we use that's their like we use that as his class, yeah. like, and then we we pair oh, that with yeah. Astro, Astro Mage, like Astro Mage. Okay, I think that, I think we we can go with that for now. Okay, and then uh, we'll work on that. And then um, uh, <laughs> M, M, M and M and Piper. You know, Unicorn Phoenix. You, you really need to try to combine these uh, animals. These are some pretty distinct no. Unix. Unix. <laughs> yeah, I think Unix. I think that'll be. What is what is Piper's last name? Uh, Will, uh Willowbrook. Oh. So like Golden Willow Braid, Brook. that is the cutest ship name Golden ever. Oh, Golden, Golden Brook. Yeah. I guess it is easier to just do the last names. I think that that's it's adorable. Yeah, well, good. that's because all of their last names are like they're two, two part, part names, like yeah. Willow Brook, Golden Braid. Good like yeah, they are there and Moonwolf. Yeah, good they thing. are all they are all two parts. So that, that that should be the default. I think is the last names, and then um, can you okay. get more creative with the animals though? Because um, we, if we're gonna if we're gonna get into yeah. Ruby naming t- uh, like that's the they also kind of have colors these these four so you could do ruby color type names um that's what i was expecting you to go with and then you said animals and i was like i'm gonna pass like that's <laughs> unicorn and phoenix i mean come on like if there's a ship with a unicorn and like that this is this has to be a thing but i don't even know what the combination of those two is but um you could be like rebirth like you could do that for phoenix and you could be like horn like you know you could try to get creative like that anyway we're gonna we're gonna work on this miss cons phantom okay <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll dedicate a whole other Yeah, that'll be that'll be our next podcast. <laughs> no. I think I think so. <laughs> there so there you go. Um uh yeah, so uh the what was the other thing I want to do? Oh yeah, stand that episode. So I think episode 5, I think you guys are on episode 6. Yeah. Yep. I think 6 yep. is great too. Yeah. Um Delaney, final thoughts on these episodes of Miss Cons and anything you're potentially looking forward to from the show. I just really like the show. Like, I'm really digging it. Um, I'm looking forward to just more misadventures. I'm actually kind of hoping they'll do some more kind of everyday things. Like, I think it would be fun if they went to the mall and, like, did dumb stuff. Just went to the mall. (laughs) Like, I'm kind of like, I wouldn't mind a filler episode. Like, let's go. I want to, like, I just want some more kind of exploring the city. Like, I wanted more out of when they went to the Undercity. So I'd like to see, like, more of that kind of stuff. But, um... I'm really liking everything. It's really good pacing, and all the characters are fun, and I'm just really digging everything. Uh, nice. Uh, April, uh, final thoughts, things you're looking forward to? Um, yeah, I think a, a filler episode would be nice, because we've, we've been going at it hard, so we all need to take a break. But uh, I, I, really, I really like the show. I haven't been this excited about a show since, like, Star vs. the Forces Ooh. of Evil, so... Yeah, it, I, it, it I mean, me it, with it, April, you are our magical girl correspondent, so I think that yes, yeah, so, so, <laughs> so I think that as the correspondent, this is our next magical girl show. So I think that makes sense. Yeah, 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 it does. <laughs> this, is, this is the so, ideal crew for the show. I think this, this is our. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, I also, feel like, yeah, I'm really. Yeah, go ahead. 
Oh, it was just just that I'm really like I really I really do like this show. So, and I think the flaws that it has, I I don't care. Like I don't mind them at all. Like I can overlook them easily. Yeah, <laughs> there there's some things that are rough so far. Um, but uh, I'm more invested in this uh, early in a show than I have been in a while. Um, so I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty in on Miss Khan's. Um, I love that we're being ambitious. Love that we're throwing all these things at the wall and um. You know, I'd, I'd much rather watch this show and stick with this show through potentially tough times, although I think it's good already, um, than, mm-hmm. uh, like a, a ladybug being just like polished, but unexciting type of thing. So, um, which yeah. I think also applies to Lego elves. Um, I would really enjoy watching that, but, uh, you know, there's a lot more here, a lot more to, to talk about. So, I'm going to be looking forward to more Mysticons. Um, I think. We let's for now. We haven't talked. We haven't talked about this for now. Let's say that we'll do every. Let's say we'll be potentially back in two weeks. Like uh, we can, we can maybe say that. Um, but it's of course new shows are tough to. Um, they, they don't kind of get as many hits. So there's less incentive to uh, to keep going on them. But um, maybe every other week on Sundays or something. We'll we'll see. But um, probably. And then if and then down. if it is every week, then it would be a nice surprise. But uh, but uh, <laughs> for now, let's assume not next week. And then uh, potentially back in two weeks to talk about more missed guns, um, Scourge of the Seven Skies, and Lost and Found. Those are the next two episodes. So those are gonna gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting stuff. Let us know what you thought about um, about our discussion here. About anything we talked about in any comments section where you're watching it. We're on YouTube. You can comment there. We're on our website overtheanimated.com. One thing that does help make up for a potential lack of hits, just because it's a newer show, is more engagement. Um, with the listeners. So if you guys comment, um, if you like re blog or tweet, whatever, then that lets me know that, uh, people are listening. They want more Mysticons content as opposed to, um, just not hearing anything. So, uh, would, would definitely appreciate that. Um, an iTunes review would really get my attention too. Overlyanimated.com slash iTunes. If you mentioned like, I love your Mysticon coverage. So, um, uh, any of that stuff would help support future Mysticons podcasts. Um, you can also, of course, as always, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated thank you very much to all of our patrons especially our patrons of the podcast john aka johnny bravo and thanks as always for patron executive producers john ryan steve alex and andy um so yeah uh let us know uh i also would love more uh ship names uh let's get some traction on that in the comments and on uh, the missed contacts <laughs> let's 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 get this yeah I, I need to know what to tweet out to the world and to the creators yeah. definitely the hashtag hashtag missed <laughs> on twitter that's that's the place to be <laughs> and uh yeah and upcoming podcasts um r- continued rick and morty coverage the opposite end of the spectrum here on on our content um, that's more... <laughs> the complete opposite yeah, end and uh, also about jack horseman complete opposite end of the spectrum but um uh i don't know we well, there will be other stuff uh kid stuff including you know obviously more steven universe star and um at some point, Little Witch Academia and um, some movie discussions we've got going. So all that stuff, very exciting, at OverlayAnimated.com. Uh, thank you guys very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.